What's up guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to day nine of the Forex challenge, right? Um, the Forex challenge series. I've got bad news. I'm down 2%. So overall, I'm up 1% on the challenge. So EN lost, no, E Chef lost and AUD USD lost, right? And I know where I went wrong and when you guys point out to me and you're right. <clears throat> and what I was doing was I wasn't waiting for my confirmations. Now I'll show you my uh, journal, right, of how I like to make my journal and give myself feedback. And one of them was I could have waited for better targets and one of them I should have waited for more confirmations, right? So what I've noticed in that was impatience, probably wanting to trade too much, um, and another loss that I did on AU like last week or something. Um, there was, I knew there was liquidity above my area, so I knew there was risks in the, is a higher risk trade, but I still took it. So maybe I need to slow down a bit, stop trading as much, stop looking at the charts, wait for one a good one or two good setups and see where it goes, which is great. But obviously when you're in a challenge, it's kind of like, I've, I've only got 20 days, 20 trading days. So it's kind of like, you kind of like, it's, it's annoying because it gives you that, that time frame on it and you kind of have to hope that the opportunities are there to make most of that time, right? So I get it. I gotta wait for the higher setups. That's what I was doing correctly at the start of the challenge. I was really patient. I was waiting for decent premium levels, decent discount levels, or waiting for proof. And it worked, it was great. And then when price moved past those levels, then I was kind of like in limbo and I was like, oh, okay. Then I was looking for trades and obviously this is where I went wrong because I did those trades to begin with in decent discounted and premium levels and obviously price moved away and I was like, oh, okay, now I need to wait a couple of days for those prices to be in decent premium discount levels again. So I think that's where it went wrong. I'm still up on the challenge, still up 1%, which is fine, but just means I need to build myself back and I know that <clears throat> when I come back to those levels, it will build back up probably quickly again as well. So I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. I know where I went wrong. It was one, I was too eager, two, I wasn't patient enough. And you know, the transfer of Welsh, the Welsh, transfer of Welsh, <laughs> transfer of wealth. God, I'm losing my mind this morning. Um, but yeah, that's where I went wrong. And um, I've learned from it. And I'm just waiting. So now the only setup I can really see today that's in a very discounted area is Aussie CAD. And I'm gonna show you. And I'm still gonna wait to see what happens. Right, this is what I'm seeing on the daily. So we are at a hugely discounted area, massively. So I now need to wait for proof in this area that price actually wants to go up in this area. And what I'm seeing on, I'm just gonna to zoom to the 45 minute time frame to make it easier for you guys, is <clears throat> price is coming down, divergence is going up. We've taken out the lows. So let me just make this liquidity taken so you guys can see what I'm on about. Make it 10. So we've had liquidity taken here, right? So now I'm waiting for price to possibly do this. That's what I'm hoping prices would do. That's what I want price to do. If price doesn't give me that, then, well, I'm not bothered. I'll wait for another opportunity somewhere else. But yeah, that's all I've got at the moment. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. I'm kind of like getting used to the concept of, I don't care if I don't meet my target within 30 days. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. I'll get a free retake. I'm still in profit. I can still be in profit for like, I don't know, a penny and I can still get a free retake and just wait for those good setups. But until that happens, there you are. There's no rush. Right guys, I've gone in for a trade. I'm back in Euroshef. You know, I've had bad luck with Euroshef, right? We definitely know this. But, finished? Right. right. But I've waited for my confirmations this time, right? So it's in a discounted area, like I've been saying this morning. 
Then I wanted to see proof. I got that proof this morning. Right time, right place, and it looks like it's making sense. I'm only risking 0.5% on this because I'm only 1% up my challenge now. So I'm being extra cautious. Right, so this is the trade so far. <clears throat> As a trade so far, I've got TMS in play. It came up, it made sense, it accumulated in my area, it made targets, it tested them. I've got more targets on the way up. So that's a one to three if it works out. Uh, the gains would be a 1.1% gain on that if, if it, if it works, if it works, right? But the next one I have on pending, and I hope it doesn't take on targets because it looks beautiful, is Aussie CAD, right? So <clears throat> it's in my area of interest. Again, it's made targets. Now all I need to do is wait for price to come back to where I want to get in on the market. Will I see that today? I don't know. Will I see it in New York? Maybe, but it's looking good. It's making sense. I predicted this impulse to the upside. I just want it to actually come back, trigger me in because this is a one to 10 and using TMS, this would be like a seven and a half percent gain alone, right? On 1% risk. That'll be 1.1 over there. So I'm looking at like eight, 9.6. And then obviously I'm already up 1% at the moment, so technically would have passed the challenge. So I really want this trade to flag back nicely to my area. But again, I don't control the outcome. I just gotta sit on my hands and wait to see what happens. So guys, I keep you updated and I hopefully, fingers crossed, Aussie CAD comes back to me and doesn't take my target. Okay guys, so looks like um, it did take on Aussie CAD, it did take these two targets, but then it created more, and then it looks slightly juicier on the 45 minute time frame, which is what I've gone in on now. Rather than the 30 minute, gone on the 45 minute, it lines up with my kill zone, which is this white box here. Um, so I'm hoping during the New York Open now that it flags down, retraces a little bit to get a better price and then hopefully push back up. So I kind of don't really want to miss out on this trade, but it is what it is. Um, on the other hand, I've hit TP1 on EuroCAD, um, so that is, I think, only a 0.37% gain. Um, but if I go to history and drag it up, history and drag it up, you can see 261 pounds. This has just been taken out because obviously I only risked 0.5%. Um, so, <clears throat> so far, so good. Um, it's a better day. It always is a better day when you follow your rules. And I figured out with me with trading personally, right? Trading personally. I don't really care about the money. Which is, you're not going to believe it. So that's fine. You can destroy it in the comments, right? But just let me know in the comments if you still agree with this. You feel good when you trade good. And I don't mean trade as in... You make a lot of money that day. I mean, trade good as in you follow your rules, you stick to your plan, and you just trade really well. Like, it's not like a end result. It's just mm -hmm. enjoying the process, if that makes sense. Like, stay when you know you stay disciplined and then you got rewarded from it from a good trade, it just feels good. I don't know if that's weird or what, but I feel good when I wait for my confirmations. I feel good when I... Yeah, I, I feel good myself, all right, when I follow my plan and I stick to my plan and I get rewarded from doing that. That's that's what trading feels good for me. It just feels nice. The money is just a plus side of it, but yeah, just trading well, just it's rewarding in itself. I know that sounds sad, but for me, it's true, right? <laughs> and my AUD CAD trade is 40 pips away. So hopefully we get a nice retracement. Maybe tomorrow this will work, maybe it won't, but Euro Swiss is going well. And we'll see what happens. All right, guys, give you a quick update. I've gone in on Pound CAD. It came into my point of interest. It's in my four hour point of interest. Um, I saw a distribution happening, so I can see it rejecting in my four hour um, point of interest, which is this white box within this daily point of interest, which is this green box. Um, I can see it working down. And then if I go to the one hour, I can see distribution. If I go to the 15 minute, you'll be able to see it better. I see it's distribution happening, if you can see that. Distribution happening. Also, divergence happening as prices going up. This is coming down. Saw that, 
Um, and I'm just going to hopefully ride the momentum down a little bit. It is quarter past four in the afternoon, so it's not the best time, but um, this makes a lot of sense to me, so I'm just, I took the trade. Um, Euro Chef, I've hit TP1, but it looks like it might come down to break me, uh, stop me out of break even, but we'll see. So that one's still um, on the cards, waiting to see what happens with that. And CAD Chef, it did take out my targets, but it looks like it's going to flag down, which looks good. Um, let me just zoom out a little bit so you can see. So I'm probably going to look at a three hour entry on this uh, trade. So hopefully by tomorrow, price would have flagged its way down. We could look for a three hour entry. And N Chef for me is very interesting. I'm looking for a buy here. It looks great, but I'm not seeing enough divergence on a higher time frame for me to think this is going to be the turning point. This is just a markup I was thinking about on a 45 minute time frame. Um, let me just zoom out a little bit. It is making targets on the way down. I can see price is moving down, but the divergence is kind of going up, but not that much. And there is a weekly open just below this. So I feel like it might do this. This is what I'm thinking it might do, and I'm not confident in placing a pending on at the moment. I'm feeling like price might do that. Something like that. If that happens, that's great. That'll be tomorrow, though. Or it might be middle of the night, and I might miss it, but... I'm going to be keeping my eyes on NZD Chef. It is in a logical area, so it does look good. But yeah, that's all I've got, guys. That is the end of today. Let me just stop my hair. Put a hat on because it looks bad. <laughs> there we go. That is the end of today, really. That's my trading done. I'll keep you guys updated on the GG Forex Facebook group. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed day nine. Day 10 tomorrow, Friday. Um, let me just check if there's any news on tomorrow. Any news, uh, major news um, all day on the USD. So that could be quite interesting. Um, so yeah, so that's what I've got. Today's been okay. Obviously, if I get stopped out on Eurochef, then I've made 0 0.37. So it is a green day. I have learned a lot. Like I said at the start of this video, I have learned a lot. And it is now paying off. But I'm gutted at myself that I let myself slip on the discipline to be in that situation in the first place. But anyway, guys, like, share, subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. I hope you're enjoying the series so far. If you are, let me know in the comment box below.